When I was a boy, many, many years ago, used to play in this bush all the time, and my dad always had owl boxes. And uh, he'd have them up in the tree over there, and we'd always watch for the owls when they were nesting. And uh, to this day, owls are like my all-time favorite bird. I love owls. And uh, we're talking like little screech owls, eh? like little eight, nine, ten inch owls, and uh, super cute. So part of my whole little plan of kind of retaking this bush and the possible camp and cleaning up all the the dead ash and whatnot is uh, reestablishing the owls in this area. And you know, this is the time to get the boxes out so they can find them and uh, start a nest because they're real early nesters. But if they don't find them this year, they'll find them next year. But that's what we're doing today. Going to check the trail camera. If you're good, maybe at the end of the video I will uh, make a little montage if I got anything on the trail cameras. But in the meantime, let's go back to the shop and do a quick little build. We'll come back and uh, install our little owl boxes. All right, guys. Here is my prototype that I banged together. I just made it out of uh, an eight foot piece of uh, standard barn board pine. And that's uh, 12 inches, but really it's about 11 three eighths and it's about three quarters of seven eighths thick. But the main thing that we need to know is uh, the floor area should be at the smallest eight by eight, 10 by 10 would be best. I think we landed on nine by nine for this one. All right, just using the board full width on the back, okay? And from the bottom of the hole, we want 9 or 10 inches to the floor. Now, this floor is sitting up on the, some, little, some little ledges. So, it's really 10 inches from the bottom of the floor, not the bottom of the, the birdhouse. Okay? But I'll show you. I got some pieces here. I cut some extras, and we're just going to knock it together. And uh, we'll just go through it as we do. All right. Let me get these things aside. Starting with the back. I made the back... I didn't cut the back at all, and I made it uh, 27 and a half inches tall. Now, 27 and a half inches tall, that gives me room for a little fancy little screwing area on the top and the bottom. I gave three inches on top, two inches on the bottom, okay? That's that line. The sides, I made the front uh, 18 and a half, and the back is 22 and a half. So, it's 22 and a half degree angle, all right? So, I cut the two sides 22 and a half degree angle with the front being like I said 18 and a half all right I ripped them down to 10 inches so 10 inches wide all right so I'm just gonna go like that and again the front is 18 and a half now let me show you quick here what I'm doing the front section I made nine inches wide by 18 and a half, obviously, because the 18 and a half is the same as the front, all right? Now, we didn't have to go on an angle with this front because we got point to point and the roof is going to cover, okay? So that's just a square cut, 18 and a half inches tall. So it's 18 and a half here, 18 and a half here, all right? This is 9 inches, this is 10 inches. Pretty simple, but I drilled the hole. I used a 3-inch uh, hole saw jigsaw works it doesn't matter if it's square the point is you don't want three three and a half inches is the whole size and what I did on the inside just took my saw and I just cut some shallow cuts in here uh, some guys put wire in there some guys put nothing you can put cleats in there if you want to but just something for the babies that they can kind of climb up to the hole because the hole is so deep all right so that's basically it so I'm just gonna go ahead and knock this together I made this, like I said, with the back untouched and the sides two inches from the bottom is where I'm going to start. But I'm a, a reveal guy, okay? So everything I do is going to have like a, about a quarter inch reveal, all right? Because I just don't like trying to go with things flush. I'm a trim carpenter, so you can never do that pretty. A reveal always looks better. So let me go ahead and uh, bang these together. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about it as we go. Now, with the floor being square, I need something that it's going to rest on. I bought hinges. I was going to hinge the roof. But when I got playing with that, I thought, this is a good idea. So I like this idea that I can just punch the floor out 
and the crap can fall through instead of uh, trying to lift it out from the top and uh, we'll talk about uh, safety measures if needed after but uh, so with that in mind we're going to put these little nine inch cleats on the bottom to the back side and i'm just going to uh for video's sake and speed i'm just going to tack that in there all right i'll go back and screw everything together after but put them on the back and like i said leaving the reveal so let's just go ahead and uh let's just go ahead and tack that up there i can screw it all together after the fact all right one side Two sides. Just a couple tacks. See what I mean about the reveal though? I've got the nice reveal there. So I didn't try to make it flush or anything. It's a obvious reveal. Okay. So with my cut inside, like I said, uh, this is the reason here. If this is my floor in here, now you can see that that's really a two inches before the bottom of the floor. So like I said, 10 inches to the bottom of the hole, but that's starting two inches from the bottom, all right? So let's just go ahead and put that in there. point I'm just going to get some screws and I'm just going to screw it all together nice and solid okay so we got the uh, the rough shell together now on the front here I've got some little uh, little cleats here you don't need them it's just uh, I need them for me you give a little bit of character all right so I just kind of spaced these on here, and I'm just going to screw them. These are all just uh, little scraps I ripped from my cutoffs, but uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So again with the screws, screw them on there, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Here we go. All right, there you go. Now. Like I said, not necessary. And all of this is rough. This is this is bush furniture. Like we're not building a piano, so don't get too caught up with the. Even I put little angles on these and stuff, but uh, totally not necessary. All right. But on the bottom, so we got two cleats here. Okay. So we got a nine inch square. So I cut this piece at about eight and seven eighths. Some guys put drainage holes, or whatever. But if you make it an eighth of an inch all around short. It's fine. So all it does is go in there, okay? And now if I want to get that out, I just push it up, tilt it, and we're out. All the crap falls out, put it back up, and out. Now, the only drawback that I could see with that idea of the floor is that uh, maybe if you're in a raccoon area that they could come up and get it underneath and, and push it up. So if that's the if that's the case. I mean, one screw on each side is going to hold that in there, solid, and uh, what's it take to go out with your drill to uh, take a screw out to take the floor out, right? Because uh, I just think cleaning it out, this is going to be probably 10 to 12 feet in the air, so it's going to be so hard to get everything out from the top if that was hinged. Like I said, I bought everything. In fact, this whole idea came, it's kind of funny because they were, lockdown was coming, so I went and I bought a whole raft of pine for odds and end projects and uh you know this just came up and it's a perfect fit so let's put the top on so 18 and a half at the front 22 and a half the back on a 10 inch piece gives you a 22 and a half degree angle and that's perfect that's why you don't want to go you know three inch angle five inch angle 
try to try to do something that you can cut again. So I cut that on a 22 and a half degree angle on my saw. And again, this is full full width, same as the back. And that just goes right up like that. And then uh, I overhung it about an inch, all right? All right, that's our uh, our rustic L house. Real quick, simple build. Main things to keep in mind is that you want between an eight and a ten inch square floor. Eight is small, so this is nine, and uh, the floor is a little bit sloppy. So you can uh, push it up. You know, take it out. And get it back. Up. Back on the cleats and then if coons or something become a problem just put a screw in it and you can take it out uh, you can put tin on the roof if you want to but uh, that's a, this is a full size board on the top and on the back three inch hole three and a half inch hole max you can be square you can do different gables but uh, that's the concept I wasn't going to go into great detail and in, uh, showing you how to make a box but uh, it's pretty simple you don't need the front but it looks better all right, back to the bush. All right, well, what I'm looking for installing these is I want a nice clear flight path. I don't want a lot of tight trees, and I don't want it facing directly north. North is that away, so this is going to be kind of south, southeast, get some of that morning sun. So I got two of them. This one here is, if I do make a camp, it's going to be like probably right behind the camera here. And uh, so I want to keep that one kind of close to watch. But I think the other one, I'll just go and put it on the edge of the pasture, way that way, and uh, try and get the, the hunting owls with the, in the pasture. So one in the bush, one on the edge of the bush. And uh, that's about it. Hopefully uh, red-tailed hawks and uh, squirrels are known to overtake some of these houses. But uh, hawks I can live with. There's lots of hawks around here. Squirrel, we may... Uh, we may have to evict them. <laughs> so let's get this screwed on. Make sure it's level. If it's not level, uh, the birds aren't going to want to live in it. <laughs> screws on top, one the bottom, good to go. Before we move on, we got to put some uh, shavings. Got a little bucket of shavings here. Owls are not your traditional uh, nesting bird where they build little nests with hairs and sticks and grasses and whatnot. They just use whatever's there, whether that be the, the bottom of a hole in the tree or a, or a bird box. They won't do anything to, to enhance their, uh, their little nest. They just lay the eggs right on. So if you want to avoid some some uh, possible damage to the eggs and the birds. Just give them something soft. Throw a couple inches of uh, shavings in the bottom. All right. Level. Yeah, right, eh? And behind, that's the, the bush behind, but you can see here, right on the edge of this pasture out here. And that's gonna be great for the, uh, the hunter to go get some mice. And uh, yeah, a little bit of everything here. So if I was a betting man, I'd say this house would go first, but who knows? Well, all I got left to do is uh, throw some shavings in there and uh, we got our lick. But uh, before we go on, I want to say thanks to everybody who bought me a coffee this week. 
those who checked out the Amazon store or bought merch, I really appreciate it and uh, I can't thank you enough. But since you've been a good audience and uh, fingers crossed the trail cams hold some uh, footage, I'm going to leave you with a montage. Montage. A montage. And uh, I will catch you in the next one. Thanks, guys.